Hey, what's going on guys? Elliot here, AKA apartment bartender. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about this recent trip that I took to Scotland with Hendrix, one of my favorite brands. Learned a ton about them. I'm gonna leave you with five really interesting things that you should know about Hendrix in this video. All right, let's get after it. So first things first, Hendrix is a Scottish gin. I did not know this before I had the opportunity to work with them, which kind of seems like it would be obvious now it says distilled and bottled in Scotland. But I was surprised at the amount of people that messaged me saying that they didn't know that it was from Scotland. Reason being most gin is produced in London or you know, that's London dry gin is probably the, the most broad of gin categories, um, but it's produced all over the world. Nonetheless, um, Hendrix is under the portfolio of uh, William Grant. And so William Grant's known for uh, their, their Scotch whiskey, uh, Grant's and Balvenie and uh, Glenfiddich. And so in 1999, they launched the brand Hendrix Gin and it's been crushing it since, um, again, one of my favorite brands, but I did not know that it was from Scotland, which I find super interesting in the town of Girvan. They have a crazy distillery, uh, which we'll dive into in a little bit. Second thing about Hendrix that honestly actually blew me away uh, is the Gin Palace. The distillery in Girvan where Hendrix is produced is insane. Like it looks like Alice in Wonderland, uh, just crazy Willy Wonka style distillery. And everything about it is, is honestly pretty breathtaking. Like you walk in and you're walking up and there's this black gate and they open up the gate and you walk in and you just see these rolling grass hills and there are bikes out front uh, with these big wheels and you walk into the distillery and floor is checkered, high ceilings, there's a, a garden on, on both sides producing different citrus and different types of fruit to use in experimental uh, ex expressions. Um, and then you see the stills in the back, the, the two copper pot stills um, and it's insane like it's one of those distilleries that you walk into and you you know are just kind of in, in awe um, just with how crazy it is but that was that is their new distillery um, and, and this distillery in Girvan that we had the opportunity to go to the Gin Palace is now the reason why they're able to start producing different expressions other than the flagship um, since 1999 when they started they've mainly had the uh, flagship expression, but within the last year or two, they've launched Orbium, they've la launched Midsummer Solstice, um, which as they start to venture on, are gonna be producing different kinds of expressions and start experimenting and stuff, which I'm excited for. Um, but nonetheless, the Gin Palace was absolutely insane. Third thing that I found really interesting was the production process for Hendrix. Um, they use two types of stills. They use a Carter head and a Bennett, and I'll link to their, um, to their distilling page on their website if you wanna read a little bit more on that and what the two stills do, but they both have their own role in, in steeping the botanicals. Hendrix uses 11 botanicals in their process uh, for the flagship product at least. And um, what really differentiates Hendrix is the infusion of cucumber and rose essence um, into uh, the liquid. And so we had the opportunity to, to be in a class and taste Hendrix, um, you know, the, the liquid that came off the, the Carter head still, the liquid that came off the Bennett still, and then also had two glasses by us uh, with rose essence and cucumber essence. And having, having the opportunity to like smell it and then having the opportunity to, to taste the different gins and how those are blended or the different liquids and how those are blended um, and infused to create um, the flagship product that Hendrix has out um, was really interesting. You know, it really produces a, a really refreshing uh, gin. And if you do drink it in a gin and tonic, that's why you see it garnished with cucumber to accent the botanicals and the flavor profile of Hendrix. So I thought that was really interesting. Again, I'll be sure to link to their page in the description to learn a little bit more about distilling uh, so I don't get too nerdy on you here. Fourth thing about Hendrix that I really loved was meeting Leslie Gracie. Uh, she is the master distiller for Hendrix and has been with William Grant and on Hendrix since it launched in 1999 and had the opportunity to have a conversation with her and honestly one of the uh, most genuine people I've met in the industry and a total badass uh, for sure. Uh, but 
I like to kind of when I'm when I'm talking to people, I like to, uh, especially at the top of the industry and in, in her field, uh, hear a little bit about the backstory of like how she got started. And one of the things that I found really interesting was that she said that she really didn't have distilling as a career path. Um, it was something that kind of was was uh, along the way. Um, but I'll let you her tell you in her own words. I'll never say that I woke up one morning thinking I'm going to be a gin distiller. My degree is chemistry and when I started work originally I worked for a pharmaceutical company and some of the, the drugs that we were developing because I was in the research and development side were so horrible to taste that we had to do certain things in terms of flavour so we could get people to take the drugs and so I'd done some flavour work with drugs and then I changed, I moved up to Scotland and got a job within William Grant within the technical section using my chemistry side of things. And because I'd done some flavour work, I kind of got involved in the new liquid development side of things. And that's where Hendrix came in. So, you know, I just kind of moved into it. It was, it was never a, you know, a career path that I thought that's what I'm going to do. Just one of those things that happened. But, Hey, I'm not complaining. It was a good path. So like I said, Leslie is one of the best people I've had the opportunity to meet in the industry. Um, super genuine, super humble. Um, it was really cool to hear her talking about just where she is with Hendrix um, and where the brand has gone from when it started. And one of the things that she said was it really wouldn't be anything without the team that she has around her, which is really cool to hear because you see people at the top of the industry um, and to see them as humble and hungry and ambitious and driven to put out quality is really cool, especially at the scale that Hendrix does, um, which seeing it on a, on a personal level, you know, they, they're very consistent with their quality. And then also, you know, the best thing that I like about it is the people behind the brand like Leslie um, that are doing amazing things, but still super down to earth. So fifth thing that I found interesting, this is not necessarily that I found, but answering a question that I get a lot is like, what do I do with that spirit? So for Hendrix, um, they now have two other expressions, Orbium and Midsummer Solstice, depending on when you're seeing this video or when you're watching it, um, it may or may not be available. However, Hendrix in general, especially their flagship product, um, I would say if you're gonna try it in a cocktail, Try it in a gin and tonic, um, garnish it with cucumber, just again, to complement and um, to complement the, the botanicals of the flagship product. Um, try it in a Negroni. If you're gonna do a Negroni, one of the things that they were doing out there was subbing out um, Aperol for Campari and kind of making a little bit of a lighter Negroni. Try it in a classic gin martini. Um, try it in a Tom Collins. It's really good with really citrus, uh, citrus cocktails and refreshing cocktails, especially around spring, summertime. Uh, it's gonna be perfect for that. Um, so yeah, so to reiterate, gin and tonic, Negroni, Martini, um, Tom Collins or some sort of variation or even in a gin sour. Um, I'll make sure that I, I put the recipes down for these cocktails in the description, but you can get creative with it. Again, like if you're thinking about how to mix with Hendrix, and gin in, 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 in general, um, think about citrus, think about uh, bubbles, you know, like soda water, tonic water, um, Prosecco or sparkling wine. Um, and then think about using it and pairing it with other spirits and liqueurs. Like I really like using uh, gin and mezcal together. And so you can use a split base and do uh, Hendrix gin and mezcal cocktail just to kind of add a little bit more uh, depth to the cocktail. So. Start with those. If you have any other questions, please feel free to jump in the comments and let me know what you think. If you have any questions or want to keep the conversation going, also on Instagram at Apartment Bartender. So be sure to tune in, always dropping recipes and appreciate the feedback and support and see you guys soon. All right, cheers.